if you've been to our CPD training this year, last year, the year before, we've been talking about cyber crime quite a lot. Uh, and because it's been on the rise. And guys, you guys, you as real estate agents, you are a target. You know, it's much easier, you're a much easier target than the old bank robberies were. You know, they don't have to put on a balaclava, they don't have to have a getaway car, they don't have to be super fit and be to be able to run in and out, and they don't have to have a gun. So they can sit at home in their trackies if they choose and uh, and commit any fraud. Because remember, you've got people's personal details, you've got their bank account details, and you've got money in the accounts. So no wonder the property industry is a target whilst you're doing that. So this week, those of you who are on, you know, anything social media at the moment, fair trading are flooding it with uh, with documents about uh, scams and cybercrime. Now, it's coming from the, uh, it's it's because it's Scams Awareness Week. You know, from the, I think it finishes on the 21st of August. So 17th to 21st of August, the Scams Awareness Week. Now it's coming, all of this information is coming out of the Australian Consumer, uh, sorry, Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, or ACCC. So it's actually, the Scam Watch section of, of the ACCC has actually seen a 55% increase in reports involving loss of personal information in this past year. So that's actually, you know, that's an increase. That's that's the increase from last year. So a fifty-five percent increase. Now, what it means is they've in this last calendar year, or sorry, the, the year up to date. So the, until the August last year, there have been twenty-four thousand reports uh, about scams and over twenty-two million dollars in losses. That's a lot of cash. So you know, there's. There's a whole lot of information, so you want to find that, get onto the ACCC website. There's a whole lot of information about scams. Fair trading have been sharing this out a lot, you know, and that and it's not just about property. It's about, you know, all of the um uh all of all of the trades, all of the you know, the tradespeople, the uh it's about car dealers, it's about conveyances, it's about every, you know, about any type of trading that happens, uh, there can be scams. So, um, and I think what Fair Trading have, have been telling us this week, it's just the New South Wales uh, Police Cybercrime Unit uh, has reported a rising number of property frauds. So, guys, this is where we click in. So, in, involving the use of uh, false bank accounts. Now, that's an issue mostly around sales. There's also the issues around property management. Guys, you've got, as I said, you've got people's details, you've got their personal details, you've got your, their bank account details. If somebody wants to change their details, if they send you an email, and of course they pack, you know, if somebody has scammed into you know one of your clients' emails and they're sending you an email, it looks like it's from them. And you know, there's I've I've heard so many stories about this happening. People then you know uh, cybercrime happening, and somebody has. Uh, you know, hacked into somebody's phone, uh, into their trust accounts, and they've actually sat. I know one agency uh, who sat and watched money. They were logging in to do something, and they saw money act two hundred thousand just go nicely out of their trust account. Like they saw it happen. Obviously, they were immediately onto the bank, and everything sort of rolled into that, and they didn't lose the money ultimately. But I mean, just it was just sheer chance and luck for that particular agency that they happened to be on doing something and they watched it without, fing- you know, hands up in the air and, you know, no fingers on the keyboard, $200,000 going out of out of their account. And I must say they were horrified that the bank said to the licensee in charge, well, you know, are you sure the person that runs your trust account uh, didn't steal it? So they, they, I mean, fair question, I guess. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it took them a while to actually act when they were very clear about the fact that this was not stealing from an internal staff member. So, uh, and it did end up being a scam and and they did get their money back. But, you know, scammers will intercept emails. Uh, They'll, you know, sometimes they'll look the same, sometimes they'll look slightly different. You know, pick up the phone. And remember, under the fraud prevention guidelines, which are part of the new supervision guidelines, they're always a regulatory guideline that we had you know, since, you know, I think it was 2013. And, 
that we always had a separate, they're now part of our new supervision guidelines as of 23rd of March. It's still in there and you still have to get photo ID and evidence of ownership and more than just photo ID. You know, there has to be copies of uh, utility accounts or Medicare cards or, you know, showing that you have more evidence, ownership of the property. It's all in the supervision guidelines uh, about the type of information you need to get when you actually list a property whether you're listing it for sale or whether you're listing it for uh, for lease, it doesn't matter. And whether it's a residential, a commercial, a industrial, a retail, a, a rural property, it's all about protecting your client and protecting you. So, you know, there's so many warnings. And again, Fair Trading have it all on their website. Uh, don't provide your trust account, bank details to purchase solely by email. You know, sometimes they want it or they want it by text or they want it by, you know, whatever they're doing. But... You know, so because people hack into these systems, confirm it, ring them up. You know, I know it's it's easy to sit at your keyboard and slam out a massive amount of work. We still have to remember that picking up the phone is really important, particularly around this type of scam information. So, and then sometimes it's, you know, you've got to be careful, you know, is this from a bank or is it not from a bank? And, you know, and, and all of those sorts of, and, you know, you'd be sitting at home thinking, well, is this, a, is this part of, of something or not? I mean, within the last half an hour before I came online, I got a, a text on my phone and it was saying, please give us the code to get into your electricity room. Uh, we need to change over an electricity meter. Uh, had somebody's name and had their phone number. Yeah. So, you know, the first thing I did was actually check with building management to find out whether that was real or not. And at this point in time, it seems that it's not. So you know, it's happening all the time. Scams are out there. Guys, you've got to be awake to it. You've got to have your processes in place and making sure that everybody's following them. Have a look at the supervision guidelines. We're talking about it in some of our elective CPDs. Uh, there's lots of you know, information. You know, you've still got to have your policies and procedures. But guys, I think the at the end of the day, pick up the phone. Check with your owners that you, you've got the right information, that you're giving out bank bank account details to purchases for your trust account, again, pick up the phone. So unfortunately, this is the, the world we're living in and it's you don't want to be the next scam on the New South Wales Fair Training website and we're all talking about you.